Hi, my name is Philip Bello. I'm a senior product manager here at Enritsu Company. Today we're going to show how you can use the Microwave SiteMaster SA20E to easily measure the insertion loss of various building materials that you might find. Um, in particular, our focus is on the FR2 bands for 5G since these are the wavelengths or the frequencies that getting signal penetration is a problem and we all want to have that strong signal indoors. So what we have here is a, a variety of materials that we're going to test today. We have some drywall or otherwise known as gypsum. <clears throat> we have a piece of a uh, typical cubicle building material for in, when you're in office environments and they build cubes. So we have a piece of that. We have a piece of wood. We have two different types of thermal pane windows. We have a couple of pieces of foam that might be used as insulation and we have some fiberglass insulation. And what we're doing here, we basically have two horn antennas set up on tripods and again this is something that you would set up in the field so fairly easy to set up it doesn't have to be super perfect it's not doing materials characterization which you would probably do in an anechoic chamber this is just a way to quickly determine whether your material is going to block that signal or whether it's going to allow it to pass through and on the table we have the microwave site master SA20E the standard configuration there are no options required for this measurement we're simply doing a transmission two port with a transmission two-port calibration which has already been applied and for this experiment today we're sweeping from 27.5 gigahertz to 28.5 gigahertz which is the 28 gigahertz band which is fairly common in most regions. The microwave site master can support anything up to 40 gigahertz so the majority of FR2 bands are supported with this product. So let's get started. The first thing we'll do is we'll measure this piece of drywall and I'll just put it in between and we can see that very little attenuation from the drywall so this is actually good news. Next we'll take this piece of room uh, cubicle building material, put it in between and we see that we've completely lost our signal with this material which tells me that internally this material has some kind of metal, it's probably aluminum and it's completely blocking our signal. So we wouldn't be getting very much through that. Here we have a piece of wood. It's approximately three quarters of an inch thick or uh, 15 millimeters. And again, we have about maybe four dB of loss only. So that's pretty reasonable. I'm gonna go to the foam. This is just a uh, half inch piece of foam that you'll find you know, various places. It's not really used for building, but it was interesting to show that the foam itself, open cell foam, really has no effect on the signal whatsoever. We'll get to the fiberglass insulation. So this is obviously commonly used in exterior walls to insulate buildings, and we're using about eight inches of thickness. And again, absolutely no impact on the signal. Next we have a representation of a thermal pane window which you'll find in residences and uh, commercial buildings. This one's made with some fairly thin glass. It's just two pieces put together. It's not an actual thermal pane, but it represents what a thermal pane would be. And here we can see, you know, we've got some loss, three or four dB depending not significant. The last item we're going to test is a different type of thermal pane window. This is one of the energy efficient thermal pane windows that has what they call low E glass in it. And we put this in between and suddenly we've lost over 40 dB of our signal. So while this is energy efficient window and it may be nice for you know saving heat or cooling, it's absolutely detrimental to the millimeter wave frequencies. For more information, there's an application note you can find at our website, www.ritsu.com, and thanks for watching.